Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. Planets, planets everywhere. Jupiter and Mars in the morning, Saturn and Mercury in the evening. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, outreach astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory, and I'll be your guide to the sky this month on Stargazer. July is quite a month for planet viewing, either at sunset or sunrise. Let me show you. Okay, I've got our skies set up for about an hour after sunset, Monday, July 18th. Look low in the west, just as it gets dark, and you'll be able to see the elusive planet Mercury hovering above the western horizon. It'll be in about the same position for all of next week. Up to Mercury's left is Regulus, the bright blue star which marks the heart of Leo the Lion. A hook of stars marks the lion's head and mane, and a triangle of stars up and to the left marks where his hindquarters would be. The brightest star in the triangle is named Denebola, and the word Denebola actually means the tail of the lion. Let's go forward in time a bit, and you'll see that each night Regulus and Leo will drop a bit lower, and Mercury will shift a bit farther to the left and seem to approach Regulus. They won't be very high above the horizon, so you'll have to hit the timing just right. Look too early, and it'll be too bright to see them. And if you look too late, Mercury and Regulus will be too low to see. And next week is the best time to look for them. Much easier to find, and not so picky about the time, is ring planet Saturn. Look up and to the left of the tail of Leo for a pair of lights close together in the night sky, and you found the ring planet Saturn and the star Parima, its temporary companion. Saturn is a great target for a small telescope, and if you watch for the rest of the summer, you'll be able to see Saturn leave Parima behind and get closer to Spica, the bright star off to Saturn's left. Saturn and Spica are nearly the same brightness now, but Saturn will get a bit brighter each week throughout the summer months. Now, for those of us who have to get up before dawn, there are a few planets for us to enjoy also. This is an equal opportunity sky. About an hour before sunrise next Monday, look low in the east, and you'll see there are a load of bright stars over there. The brightest is not a star, it's a planet, the biggest one in our solar system, Jupiter. Jupiter will be far and away the brightest thing you'll see over there in the east until the moon joins them in a week or so. But we'll talk about the moon a bit later. Jupiter is also a great target for a small telescope or even with binoculars because Jupiter is really, really big. It's 11 times wider than our 8,000 mile wide Earth. Plus, it has four moons that you can see with only a pair of 7 by 50 binoculars. They move around Jupiter fairly quickly, and you can actually see them move in the course of an hour or so. On Saturday, July 23rd, the last quarter moon will be about 7 degrees above Jupiter. And the next day, the 24th, an even skinnier moon will be 7 degrees to the left of Jupiter. This is a great chance to see how much of the sky the moon crosses every day. Let's go back to Monday again and look well down to the left of Jupiter and look for a pattern of stars that has always looked like a big fang to me. The two brightest stars in this fang are called Capella in the constellation Auriga and Aldebaran in Taurus the Bull. The other stars have names as well, but the best part of this fang is the point made up by the sharp V of stars in the head of Taurus the Bull. Officially, these are two constellations, but to my mind, they should be seen as a huge fang from a celestial saber-toothed tiger stalking the pre-dawn skies. Just below the fang, look for a reddish point of light. It's the small red planet Mars, and Mars is about as dim as it gets right now because it's very far away from the Earth on the other side of the solar system. So now is not the best time for viewing Mars, it will be a lot better in March of 2012 when Mars will be much closer and twice as bright as it is now. So that's Mercury, Regulus, and Saturn in the evening, and Mars, the Fang, and Jupiter in the morning. Keep looking up.